General Linear Models Part 3, or 4, or 5, whatever. Three plus groups. So before, things were pretty simple. We visualize categorical predictors with median dot plots. We compute means, mean differences, Cohen's D. But now things are going to get complicated. But only a tiny amount, really. Now we have three means to compute instead of two. And now we have multiple mean differences to compute instead of just one. Otherwise, it's really not all that different. So when do you use general linear models with three plus groups? You use general linear models with three plus groups when you have a grouping variable with three or more groups. Okay, I can see that. Now I'm gonna go into what the computer is doing in the background to make this happen. And so this next part is for the advanced viewers. Remember in the last video, we created a new variable called big five and marked it as one or zero. One if it was the big five, zero if it wasn't. And by default, that was Amazon. And once we did that, the intercept represented the mean of the Amazon group and the slope represented the difference between the Amazon group and the big five group. But now if we have more than two groups, like for example, Amazon versus big five versus a small publisher, now we have a new problem because now we have to create two variables. We have one variable called big five. Are you a big five book or not? And we also have a second variable called small publisher, which is similar to before. Is this book published by a small publisher? One for yes, zero for no. So it ends up looking like this. And those books published through Amazon have zeros across the board because they are not published by the big five or by the small presses. By the process of elimination, if they are not published by Big Five or by the small publishing venues, then it must be Amazon. That's one complication. We just add another variable and that's okay. Now the GLM looks like this. Outcome is equal to intercept plus slope one times group one plus slope two times group two plus E. Or author earnings is equal to the Amazon mean plus the difference between Amazon and the big five times the big five variable, which is one or zero, plus the difference between Amazon and the small publishing company times the new variable that indicates whether they belong to the small publisher or not. Ah, uh, it's so hard. Yeah, I know, but really that's okay because you don't have to do this. The computer will do this for you. Well shucks, why are you making us learn it then? Okay, let me be straight with you. Here's why, because I know you're going to meet opposition. People are gonna say, uh-uh, you can't use regression to do a t-test. And I want you to be able to say, uh-huh. And then they're gonna say, oh yeah, how? And by diggity, I want you to be able to defend that. Well, all you have to do is create a new variable that is a dichotomous indicator, which indicates whether you belong to the group or not. What? And that's what I want them to say. In short, I want you to know this so that you can know how it's doing it in the background so you can see that it's all the same. And so you can win fights on my behalf. We never, ever, ever, ever get into statistical arguments. But if you do, you better win. Like I said, the computer will do that for you. But even if you don't have to know all the nuances, I'd still like you to know the basic idea of how it happens. And not to mention, it's kind of cool to know what's going on in the background, right? No. You know what, you can suck it. And advance stuff. So now, just as I did in the last video, I'm gonna to return to the Amazon data set. And by the way, I secretly omitted three additional groups. Indie publishers, small publishers, and uncategorized publishers. And now that we know how to handle these situations, let's go ahead and reanalyze the data set. As before, step one is to visualize the data. Now we see that small publishers take up a good size of those who are publishing, followed by indie, then big five, then uncategorized, and then in dead last is Amazon. Again, this was a couple years ago. That may have changed since then. The daily author revenue is ridiculously zero inflated. But just like before, I deleted all the zeros and then analyzed things because I'm only interested in those who have recently released books. And now we can visualize the bivariate relationships. And as before, Amazon is still on top. And as before, everything is still skewed. And then just after Amazon, we have Big Five. So Big Five isn't doing as good as Amazon, but it is in second place. And as before, the next step is to look at the diagnostics. I don't think these will change much from the last time, but you never know. Maybe adding a couple more groups gets things a little more normal and a little less heteroscedastic. Probably not. Nope, they haven't changed. So as before, we have zero inflated residuals-ish. And I say ish because they're not technically zero inflated, they're just small number inflated, you get the idea. And then again, I'm gonna perform some statistical ninja moves in the background that you guys don't quite have the background for yet, unless you understand robust methods or generalized linear models or that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna pretend that we did that. Now we're gonna look at the estimates. As before, we are interested in group means and group mean differences and Cohen's D's and those sorts of things. And here are the means, and these are robust means, by the way. See a link in the description for more information on that. And here are the mean differences. So Amazon outperforms Big Five by $16.43 Wait a minute, I thought it was 17 something. Correct. 
And that's because of multicollinearity, which we're gonna talk about when we start talking about multivariate GLMs. So between Amazon and the big five, we have $16.43 average difference with a confidence interval that spans from $14.83 to $18.02 and that Cohen's D probably isn't trustworthy because things are just ridiculously crazy. But I start getting overwhelmed when I see lots and lots of tables with lots and lots of information. It's hard to absorb all that information, so I much rather look at it in the graphic. And we've already looked at it in the graphic, but now we are going to overlay the fit of the model. The red dots represent the fit of the model with its corresponding confidence intervals as those little horizontal bar thingies. And so you notice that in all cases, the model is actually predicting higher than the median is, which is what the black dot represents and that sort of thing. It looks like the skewness is dragging our model up, which we knew that in advance because we knew that the diagnostics were showing us that we had problems. But again, this is just for teaching purposes. If you want to see a reanalysis of a data set like this, in fact, it might even be the actual data set, go ahead and look at our generalized linear model video linked in the description. And we could compute a p-value, but we know it's going to be ridiculously small and we don't care about that. So I'm not even going to show that. So now that we have looked at that data set again, let's go ahead and compare the general linear model approach for three or more groups with the way that things used to be taught. Under the old way, we would call this an ANOVA or an analysis of variance. And here is our handy dandy little decision tree that is very confusing and probably not helpful. And so what I just showed you is what you would use if you have three or more groups. So the old way, we might have computed means or mean differences, but we probably wouldn't have paid attention to them and instead we would have looked at the p-value to make our decisions. And also under the old way, that would tell you that there might be a difference somewhere in there, but it wouldn't tell you where the difference was. So then you'd have to do what's called post hoc tests, which are t-tests and it's super annoying and complicated and all these rules and all these sort of correction procedures and you know what, just screw it. All right, look at a graphic, look at the estimates and then make your decisions. That's all you have to do. With the GLM, it's the exact same as it was before. We just look at the graphics and we look at the estimates. That's it. So with that, let's review our learning objectives. Number one, know the old name for three or more category GLMs, which we called an ANOVA. Number two, know how to visualize categorical on numeric. By the way, you already know how to do this. It's called a dot plot, or I call it a median dot plot because I show the median. Number three, know how to assess the assumptions or the diagnostics. You've had this learning objective like four times, so hopefully you got it by now, at least for those advanced users. Number four, know the mathematical equation for it, just as it was before, except now we add a second binary predictor variable, indicating membership in a second group or not. And then finally, know what each estimate represents. As before, the intercept is the mean of the referent group, and then now we have two slopes, which are the differences between that referent group and the other groups and Cohen's D. And we know all this already. And next time we're gonna be talking about something super fun, which is multivariate general linear models. Till then.